All right, our second video from section 1.4 is all about graphing numbers and graphing numbers on a number line. So to graph a number is to mark its location on a number line. So if I give you this example, example number two, and I ask you to graph these numbers, they're not so easy. They're not the whole numbers that we were hoping for, maybe some fractions or decimals, but we should still be able to graph them by approximating their location on a number line. So for example, if I give you the number five halves, it might be easier to turn that into a mixed number so you know exactly what that number is. So five goes into two, excuse me, two goes into five twice with one left over. So five halves is really the same thing as two and a half. So I can find two on the number line, I can find three on the number line, and I can make sure I go in between at two and a half, which would represent the, the fraction five halves. Or I can graph the number negative 3.2. I need to go to the negative side of the number line, and I want to go to negative 3 and a little bit more. Now remember, more negative, negative 3.2, is going to be to the left of negative 3, because it's a little bit more than negative 3. It's negative 3.2. So going a little bit farther than negative 3 would be approximately right there, and I can say that's approximately negative 3.2 on the number line. So what about 11 over 8? Now 8 goes into 11 once with three left over. So 11 over eight is the same thing as one and three eighths. Now one and four eighths is about one and a half, and we have one and three eighths, so a little less than that. So I can find one and two on the number line and go a little bit less than halfway. So I can say this is my location of 11 eighths. So approximating where they are. Doesn't have to be exact, but it should be pretty close. Now every rational number can be written using fraction notation or decimal notation. So it might be easier to take a fraction and instead of writing it as a mixed number, like one and three eighths, maybe writing it as a decimal so you can kind of see uh, what its value is as a decimal instead of a fraction. So for example, you might want to convert negative five eighths into a decimal instead. So in this class, I'm going to allow you to use a calculator so you can simply take eight divided, or excuse me, five divided by eight, whew, 5 divided by 8 in your calculator, and your calculator will spit out this decimal, negative 0.625. So a little bit more than 0.5, a little bit more than a half, and then you can graph that on your number line if you were asked to graph. Or 7 over 11, we're not sure what decimal that is, but we can use our calculator and do 7 divided by 11. It should get you this decimal, 63, 63, 63, and it's going to keep repeating. So we can actually use that repeating bar uh, to represent that that 63 is going to continue in that pattern. So 0.63. All right, what happens if we have a square root, though, and we're not really sure what the square root of 3 is if we were to ask to graph it on a number line? Well, we can always take this um, irrational number and convert it into a decimal. So in my calculator, I can do the square root of 3 and I end up getting 1.732. Remember, it's an irrational number, so that decimal is going to keep going and going and going. But I can actually use this decimal then to approximate where it is on the number line. I know it's 1.7-ish, right? So not 1, not quite 2, a little bit more than uh, halfway, right? It's a little bit more than 1.5, so I can kind of graph it on my number line a little bit more than halfway between 1 and 2. I can say here is approximately the square root of 3, 1.732, on and on and on and on. So make sure that you can convert um, from a fraction into a decimal so you can kind of uh, visualize the approximate value of that number and be able to graph it on a number line.